All right, welcome back. Now, so how do I achieve this logging out and displaying why I log you out? That is outside the scope of this lesson. So really some of the, most of the code that I will write from now on, really take it uh, with a grain of salt, which really what, what I'm basically saying is, um, definitely I would not beat off myself if I don't understand what that code is doing. Because to be honest, I did not start coding this website with you. I have gone a long, 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 um, I've gone far into making this website. I have made some coding decisions that you weren't there. Um, and explaining that coding decision will basically mean I need to explain from the beginning of how I'm making this website up till now, which is the purpose of this website, of this uh, lesson. The purpose of this lesson is for you to have an idea how you might do something like, like logging somebody automatically from your website for many reasons, for security and so on and so forth. So, like I've mentioned here, if the response from the server Server is really someone else's computer. So if the response from the server is false, I need to log you out and display um, why. The way I have designed it, and you absolutely, I do not expect you to know this, okay? The following code will show you how I would implement the logout. I had implemented, sorry, the logout. So this is it basically. Uh, dispatch. What what type of dispatch is the logout? And for me, that's basically it. This one line of code that I've written I've made a design decision somewhere in my code that will log me out. So absolutely no need to worry about that, okay? Um, but it's, it's, I think it's, it would be nice to understand what you need to do. When, this, when the token expires, what do you want to do to people viewing your website? You want to log them out? Do you, do you don't want to log, on, log them out and just maybe... Say, hey, you can't interact with my website anymore. You need to log in. You know, there are many things you could do. For me, I decided to log them out, right? For example. So, log them out and display why, right? It's kind of nice to tell your users why there was an error, why they are browsing your site. You absolutely, it's not a good idea to allow your users to guess what is happening. That drives them away and they may never come to your website again. Or at least if they have to, they wouldn't enjoy using it. And as software engineers, we owe it to our users to make their stay on our website as pleasurable, as painless as, as it can be. And one of the ways to do that is to display messages. If you can, display message, you know, I'm logging you out. It's nice to tell you why, right? Okay, so this is where I need to do that. I need to, so like I said, this code that I'm writing, absolutely do not beat off yourself. This is a design, design decision that I've made. And you absolutely don't know what, need to worry about that. Flash 
message error and what kind of error do I want to show you? I want to sh I want to tell you that your session has expired. Please log in again. Please log in again. Your session has expired. Please log in again. So that is what I want to display. To the user. Now, there is a couple of things that's wrong with that. I need to tidy up on this uh, with this function. One, and you might not be aware of this since this is not a React lesson, but when you use the 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 function, I would call it a function, but it's called a hook, uh, kind of the, the name that people call it, the, those people that uh, made the React code. Use effect is a hook. Uh, but you can see it as a function, okay? So whenever I use this function, use effect. You need to clean it up. You need to clean up what you have done. Um, so really, on our case, we have made a request. And if for any reason we didn't complete this request, for example, we navigated away. Let's say you come to my website and I quickly run this script and right before this script finishes uh, running, you either close the page or go to another website or do something else. Well, what happens when this response gets back? When my server sends you the request that this function made. So that is one of the reasons why I need to basically say if anything happens, just cancel the request. Cancel it. If for any reason that code isn't running, your computer is running some other code, just cancel the request. So we need to kind of basically clean up our function to include that. So that's one thing we need to include. Um, also, one of the things that we need to do to clean up this function is this. When, when I make a request to the server through this address, this is called like this piece of code, when that request that I made to my own server might take a while for the response to come. So because it might take a while, I need to clean it up to account for that. So how do I do that? I need to use a native feature that comes with JavaScript. Literally, you can interpret this away as what it says. So this is what I'm saying. Run this code and just wait until the response comes back then you can store it in this variable. That's what I'm saying. Run this code, make a request to my server, 
whenever that response comes, because we really don't know. If you are new to async await synchronous uh, code, asynchronous code, absolutely no worry. This is not a lesson for it. But there are code. Okay, not there are code. Let me be, really be specific. When you make a request to someone else's computer, to a server, for example, you really any you really do not know when that server will res, you will get that response. That's basically what that is. You you do not know. I do not know. Anything could go wrong. Anything could go wrong. For example, when you let's say where you are now, where you are watching this video, right? You are probably watching it from your phone or from your computer or something else. Um, you can hear me because you are, your, your device is constantly making a request to the server where this video is stored. And that server is not on your it's not on your phone. It's not on your device. It's in someone else's computer. Well, what is between the connection between your computer, your device, and the, that other person's computer? Electricity. It is electricity that is making all that happen, right? So anything could go wrong. There might be storms somewhere where the wires that connects your computer and their own cuts. Or um, if you are using like a wireless connection, uh, it's mostly through through the wires anyway that uh, these are made. Um, so anything could go wrong. So that is why it's a good idea when you don't know when a piece of information will arrive, you use this away. Now, in order to use an away, this feature, you need we need to use it inside of a synchronous function. If you don't know what an asynchronous function is, like I said, uh, the async away, Please don't beat up yourself. I really do not expect you to know this. And this lesson is not about that. But what I want you to get away from why I'm using this is for that reason. Right? When you are making a request to a server, you don't know when that will arrive. But let's say, let's say, um, and let me not go far. Let me not go too far into it. But uh, I wanted to to tell the difference. What kind of code would you not await the answer from? Let me deviate a little bit. Let's say I say constant uh, a. I think I shouldn't. I shouldn't deviate from. I'm gonna. I'm probably just gonna take a turn that I will totally forget about why this, what this lesson is about. But that's what the, um, um, if you need to take anything away from this is if you are making a request to a server, the code that you write making that request needs to be in what is referred to as async away function. So, so that means all of this Uh, what did I do? Okay. All of this needs to be inside of a function. My computer is kind of slow. I apologize. In a function, function, what do we call a function? Check token expiry. Okay. I don't know why my computer is saying that. Probably because of my lint. Okay, so it needs to be in a function, but that function needs to be async. How do you write, how do you indicate that? Well, before the name of the function, you write, okay, I apologize, sir. 
I, sh I shut you off from what I was doing. Okay. Mm. Here we go. Before the function, you write async. That's what it is. So inside of this function, I will paste my clipboard. Basically, I'll, f I'll paste that what I had copied earlier. All right. So, so that is we we had just taken care of that uh, issue of we don't know when the response will come. Um, this function really takes care of that. Um, having this async away. All right. So I will come down here. I need to call the function the, for the function to actually execute. So check token expiry. And this is how to actually call the function so that the function can actually run. Okay. So we had taken care of one. Let's take care of that uh, other problem I mentioned. If you navigate away when this function is actually running, we need a way to cancel it. We need a way to cancel it so that that response doesn't get back. That whole thing that was set in motion is aborted. Um, okay, so how do you do that? Now, luckily, Axios. <laughs> Can help us, and this is how you set it up. Okay, Axios has a method called cancel token, and it has that cancel token has a method called source. So that is the request, basically. The request we send is stored in this request. Okay? So we need to find a place and cancel to cancel it if anything goes wrong. And there are other reasons to why you need to clean up after you. Um, but for now, this is more relevant to what we are doing. Um, if you go to my website and for any reason this could stop running, perhaps you navigate it, you navigate it away from the page or something else. We need we need to find a way to cancel the request. That is important because you don't want the response to come when when you are not on the page. It might create an error, some kind of side effect that you don't want, right? So let's let's cancel. Let's re let's th this is this is purely educational uh, purposes. Um, basically, the way you cancel is you return um, the return of the function So this is basically how you do it. You return a function that cancels it. If this makes no sense to you, please absolutely do not, um, I don't expect you, I do not expect that this makes sense to you. Um, uh, however, though, um, what I want you to take away from this is when you are using the use effect hook, it is absolutely necessary to return a cleanup function at the end. So basically to clean up your mess, our mess, my mess. Okay, so we've taken care of that. Now there's a total that I haven't mentioned. I want to only run this code 
if you are logged in. And how do I do that? Well, let let me copy this code to my clipboard. And this is how I will do that. If state that logged in. Now, state that logged in is basically the variable where I store if you are logged in or not. If you are logged in, when you go to, when, when you are logged in, this state of logged in will be true. When you are not logged in, it will be false. So if you are logged in, so this basically is the same thing as this. If state that logged in equals to true, run this code. So that's uh, that's what I want to do. I don't want to run this code when you're not logged in because guess what? When you're not logged in, that token. It's not available in your browser. Like I've mentioned earlier, I my server only sends you the token when you are logged in. All right, I'm getting all this uh, LinkedIn error. Um, what is he saying? No function declaration. Move function declaration to function body root. I really don't know what this um, function body root. I don't know what this is, so I'm just going to comment it out. Um, I declared my function. And then I called it. There must be a LinkedIn error where maybe that this might not be a good practice. So I will investigate that on my own. Okay. So I want to run this code when I'm logged in. And guess what? Let's do a little bit of cleanup. State that logged in is equals to true. We can shorten it to be this is the same also res the data equals to false we can shorten it like this okay what else uh, should we okay i we need to, I need to attach this response code. I need to attach something else. I need to attach cancel token. I will explain what that is in a moment, that token. So what is this? What am I doing here? You remember I mentioned something about if at the end of this use effect, we need to clean up after ourselves? Well, we need to attach a token to the response when we make this response. So if we need to cancel it, this cancel function knows which of the requests to cancel. You are basically attaching kind of a flag to it, attaching something that uh, you remember which one to cancel. So that's what that is. Okay. 
I think for now, right, we are set. We have properly set up our request um, to the server. Now, we need to go to the server. Oh, I've already, I've, okay. I've actually not been showing you the code to the server. I need to work on my video settings. I've actually been showing you the server code. I don't know, hopefully not for too long. So I need to switch you back to kind of make sure we're on the same page. So we have, I think for now, we are set now to go and receive the, this response to write the code. When we get this code, what do we do? Well, we know what to do. We need to send um, back a response of true or false. So let's let's do that. I'm gonna copy this address so I can use it on my server. Okay, this is my server. And again, you absolutely do not need to know this setup. I have started this website. Um, I've gone far to, uh, into this website. So how I structured the website and all of that, um, um, I will not beat up myself if I don't understand. Uh, the takeaway though that I want you to do is, this is my server code. This code doesn't run on your computer. When you go to my site, this code doesn't run on your computer or your device. This code runs all of this code that I've written runs on a server. Basically, a server is any is someone else's computer. I mean, it can be your computer too. Um, but for in this instance, this code, if you were to ever go to my this website that I'm making, this code will be stored in Heroku, Heroku server. Heroku is a hosting platform. So I'll basically take this code and give it to Heroku to put it in their computer. When you go to my site and you make that request, automatically that function will run. Ah, that reminds me, that's something that I missed. Let's go back and solve that and we'll come back. When we run a use effect hook, I left a little detail, which is important. There is an array of dependencies. What basically this array is, you can put any code here. And whatever code you put here, this whole function will run if that code changes, is the value of the code changes. So that's what this uh, this uh, array is used for. So if I want this code to run, for example, if I want it to run, let's say when you visit the settings page, or when you hit submit change password. If I want this function to run, I can set that up. And now I can come here and say, monitor, monitor this variable. I will put a variable, let's say, app state that settings page that visited. So if you visit the settings page, I will store a true on this variable. On this, this whole code will represent true. 
If you don't visit, it will represent false. So if this is true, basically like this, goes to true, this whole code will run again. So that is the purpose of what this bracket is at the end of the use effect hook. Now, if we leave it open, like if we open, <laughs> if we leave it uh, blank, it means it runs once. You go to my website, it runs once. If you refresh the page, it runs again. Every time you refresh my page, it runs, it, it runs. So it basically runs once, once the page loads. If you ref refresh it, the page will reload and it will run again. So, and this is how I set it up. So that when you are visiting my page, you know, if you did something that the page is refreshed or you refreshed it, this code will run and it will basically check if the token has expired or not. Expired or not. All right, let's go to the server code. So what I was saying was this code is stored with Heroku. You don't see this code at all. There's no way for you to interact with this code. So the only way you can interact with this code is by using the request. Uh, basically not you, but me, I will have to code it so that when you visit my website, that code will run, that will interact with the server. So I'd already set this up a little bit. Let me, I just uncommented that. I'm going to delete this so I can yeah, put in the correct web, the address. There's the correct uh, address. So absolutely no need. If you don't know what I'm doing here, um, I don't expect you to. So what am I going to do here? I'm going to set up a function. It's API check expiry that will actually do the check-in. Um, this is a Node.js backend. So my server code is written in Node.js, which is JavaScript. I will explain what I'm doing in a moment. Um, okay, so what am I doing here? Like I've said, right? Okay, this has to be exports. Yeah, I believe that's what it is. Yep, exports. So this function in my in my server. By the time you interact with my website, this code will absolutely be uh, in Heroku. That is the only way you interact with the, this code. So if you do interact with this code, this code will be somewhere in Heroku's uh, uh, computers. And when you visit the homepage of my website, the script on your on on my website, which is on your device, will initiate that request, and that request will run this code. What this code will do is it will check the expiry date of the token. And this is try catch. The reason why is I use that this native JavaScript feature is because I'm dealing with code that might take that I don't know when it's gonna be done. That is the reason why. Um, it's a whole 
area in in any code in any language any language has to deal with code that when you want to store a variable and we when you want to store something inside a variable and that's something you don't know when it's going to be available yeah it's a whole segment of every language every computer program language um is segment in it that that has to be taken care of in javascript one of those is the try catch you try to run the request if it fails you catch it so what are we doing here um let's see constant okay let, let's write the jwt that verify and so we are verifying something what are we verifying we are verifying the token now this jwt verify this is that json web token that i told you about i downloaded the code so the code is in my computer and that's what i'm going to also send with the server together and inside this uh, object it has a method called verify and this verify method is the one that will verify the token received from your own computer and where is that token well that token is stored in the request body and i'll show you where it comes from from your own browser from your own computer where this was stored and if you if you remember i'm going to show you here in a moment we stored it as a token so let's go and see that mm -hmm. so so this is it this piece of code is anything we want to send to the server and in here we have the token and we have the value that we are sending to the server so this token property is what I I intercepted basically here. So anything you send is gonna be request.body dot the name of the property. Okay. So this will verify it. But in order for me to really use it, I need to store it in a variable so I can kind of use it more properly. Um, let's see. Mm, let's see. Yeah, let me just store it. Uh, and then, yeah, yeah, I need... Uh, Okay, let me just finish one thing at a time. Okay. Response is equals to this verify function, this guy takes two arguments. The first argument is a token, and the second argument is what is called as the JSON web token secret, okay? If you don't know what that, that, that is, I absolutely do not expect you to. Um, so what, what basically is here that I'm doing is when you set up the, the JSON web token, you select some random uh, random secret 
It can be my cat is nice. My cat is awesome. Anything you wish. And if you want to verify anything, you pass on that secret here. But obviously, process.env that JW's uh, JWT secret isn't the 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 secret. I hid it. I hid it from you so you don't see it. And one way to hide it is using this env. And there's a way to set it up when you are using Node.js. Again, this is not a lesson for this is not a video for that. Um, so the takeaway here is when you want to verify anything. The first argument will be the token. The second argument will be your secret code. All right, so. So I think, right? Um, I would have to check this, but uh, this is basically so let's send in, okay. Mm. Let's console log response, okay? Let's see what this response is. I'm doubting myself here for a minute. For now also, Let's console log the error, okay? Let's see what's going on. All right. Let me go to my website and then refresh it and see how it goes. Nope, nope, here we go. All right, let's refresh the page. We need to log in. Okay, we are logged in. Let me refresh again to see, to generate, to run that code um, again. Okay, so let me go back to my server so we we'll see what happens. No, I probably need to memorize this. <laughs> okay, okay, I think that's this is it. Okay, so let me expand this a little bit. So we have a piece of code. Okay, I'm going too far already. That was logged to our console. ID, username, first name, last name, user creation date, um, and then we have um, other information. But check this, uh, check, uh, check this. This is the expiry of the token. And this one, when it was created. So this is the time that I logged in. And this expiry is the time that the token will expire. So now, this is what that means. So how do we send a response to the server? Like we already knew what we want to send. We want to send true if it hasn't expired, false if it has. So before we do that, let's check to see if we send in the wrong token, what happens? Do we see 
all this information? Or what do we actually see? Let's try that. So what I would like to do here is, let me remove this and just create a bogus code that represents the token. Okay. And let, let's go and refresh the browser. So the browser will send any inf uh, will, will resend that script, that function that we wrote. Okay. Okay. Let's refresh that. Okay. All right. I just refreshed that. So let's go to the back end code. Oh, look at that. JSON web token error, JW2 malformed. And so basically, it noticed that the token was wrong. And the answer to that was caught in this catch function. This catch is actually the one that logged that logged out this information. It is not this. And let me delete this so that you can we can really verify. Okay. Um, I need to make sure that you are seeing what I'm doing. Okay. Oh, do, 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 do. Please let me adjust the screen. Here we go. All right. So I'm going to go and refresh that page again. Let's do that. Okay, let's go back to uh, back in code and voila again this code was this error was generated that was because if the response if the J, if the json web token is wrong it's not the correct token This whole request fails. Because this request fails, this catch function will be the one that will tell you that it fails. Because this JWT um is also like this verification could take, could last one second or 30 seconds. We do not know. So one way to catch a failure when you're making a request is this, is basically this. You use the try catch function you try something, if that didn't go well, the answer, the response is, is caught by the catch function. So how would that help us? This is how. Let's delete this. Let's not log, log the, the failure to the screen. Let's do this. So what, what have I done here? Oh, actually, I'm not showing you the rest. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I apologize. My apologies. I need to. This is my very first uh, tutorial. So uh, there's a lot of things that I've learned while doing this. I will definitely need to correct that in my next video. So how?
how can we take advantage of how this function is organized? Well, this is it. Since this catch function will catch the failure, so if the JSON Web Token is wrong, or if it has expires, this the catch function will also catch that. So this uh, res.json means send a response back to, to you, the user of my website, send a false, just like we want, because that's what that's how we, we organized the front end code, right? But if it uh, if it is a success, which means if the token hasn't expired and we didn't encounter any network error, send true. Send true. Um, so really, we can delete this, we don't need it. Because we don't need to store the response to the object body. I mean, we don't need to we don't need to use the response for anything else if this code runs it means everything goes well if this code runs it means everything fake like something was wrong so okay so let's return let's actually put the correct token into this fun the verify function okay so we are really set for now to demonstrate this right let's go and change the expiry date right now i said the expiry date this token last i set it to 30 days by default so that means when you log into my website you have 30 days logged in before my website basically locks you up. As long as you don't, you didn't re-log in, is that one time login and you still logged in for 30 days. Once you go above 30 days, the website locks you out. So, but to, to demonstrate that, let's put something like one minute. So we can test what we have done. Okay, let's go to. Uh, again, apologies. I think I kick you out of. Okay, yeah. So here, I keep clicking uh, the button that navigates away to another page, because that's where that's what I set it as to do. Okay, so this is basically what I've done. Token last uh, one minute. So in one minute, every time you log in, I will generate a token to you. I'll send it to you, store it in your browser, and I'll be checking that token. If that token expires in one minute, then I will log you out. Because that's how we send the code in the front end. All right, let's go to that code. Oh, now, yeah, no, no. Let's go back to the browser. Uh, okay. Let's log in again. So let's log out. Let's log in back again. Okay. So we've logged in with a brand new session. So in one minute, we should be logged out. Okay. So, um, and the way we we'll log, the way it will log us out is if we ever refresh this page or went to another page, okay, 
and then we get back to that page that's when that event will happen okay so we should expect in less than a minute we should expect to see a message here that logs out that logs us out okay if our code works okay now go to my profile kind of basically do some stuff I don't want to edit this code. I want to delete this. Ah, it has already logged me out. I missed it. So, so this is a warning I have I already set that unless you are logged in, you can do some stuff. So let me go back. Oh no, it hasn't actually logged me out. Okay, so that's weird. Let me refresh this. Okay, here we go. So it has logged me out, but because I have I didn't refresh the page, the message hasn't um it wasn't displayed or something I don't understand. But in any case, here is our message. Your session has expired. Please login again so as you can see we are logged out automatically if i log in back again i wait for okay i think i kick you out of what i'm doing okay so i'm logging back again as you can see so let's let me wait for a minute and see what happens. Well, what do I do with that one minute? Let me here. Let me go back. Let me go here. If I want to add a song, I can add a song here. If I want to ban users, but let me go back because that one minute is getting close. Uh, let me refresh this page to see if that minute has expired. Like we have reached a minute since we logged in. No, apparently not. We are still logged in. There we go. Your session has expired. Please log in again. If we click on the menu, we'll see that we've been logged out. Thank you very much for listening and watching this probably awfully long video for a simple feature, um, for a pretty straightforward, uh, not nothing simple, for a pretty straightforward uh, key component of securing your website, using JSON Web Tokens to kick people out of your website if their session expires, um, expired. Um, so yeah, thank you for for watching again. Uh, and please, yeah, remember to subscribe and share if you want, uh, and come back again. Bye bye.